some of you are sitting here watching this video going, he's wearing the same shirt again. Does he ever wash his clothes? Okay, yeah, and I recorded all these in like one day. So like Francis, back off. Okay, Janet, huh. Anywho, so pause. We're getting ready to go into the Revolutionary War. That's our first major unit of study. However, a revolutionary war doesn't just exist. It doesn't just pop out of nowhere and just be like, oh, cool, we're going to have a war today. It doesn't work like that. There's always a catalyst or like an ignition point or a fuse, however you want to term it. And for the Revolutionary War, believe it or not, like one of the biggest fuses to this was actually the French and Indian War, also referred to as a Seven Year War over in Europe. Europeans. Anyways, so we're going to take a look at life before the revolution inside this little micro, is it a micro unit? Is, is it a unit? Is it a subunit? I don't really know the education terminology. I don't really care either. But we're going to look at life before the Revolutionary War inside the colonies of North America. All right. So once again, as a reminder, this is not the United States. These are the colonies and the colonies are controlled by Great Britain, also referred to as England, also referred to as the United Kingdom. Like there's some differences there. For sake of conversation in history, we're going to refer to them as Great Britain. All right, or the British. The British. It's a pity. I do say, good chop. Today's a great day for a war. Yes, I do say. Let's go take a look at the colonists and see what they're doing. Oh, my dear, they're throwing all the tea in the harbor. We should react to that because we all know tea is the lifeblood for all people. I do say, good chop. I think we should go to war because of the tea. Agreed. Agreed. Cheerio. Let's go. And that was probably like really like impolite or something. Someone's probably offended. But anyways, that's tough. Anyway, so before all that, before the tea, before the harbor, before Boston, before all that craziness, first we need to look at what's referred to as the French and Indian War. It was not between just the French and Indians. The terminology, the title of it doesn't always make sense. Remember, Great Britain wasn't the only country that was trying to settle North America. France was also here too. And they're trying to do their own thing. Everyone's trying to explore out of Europe and trying to connect to the rest of the world. Because if we can have more land, we have more colonies, we have more people, we have more power. In the end, guys, it's all about power. How can I have the most power in the world? So France and England are like having at it in the Seven Year War. We're not really going to get into the details of why they're going to war. You have the opportunity to check that out, which you'll need to. Um, but <laughs> what really amounts to is the after effect. What happens because of the Seven Year War? Remember, wars, believe it or not, are expensive. Yeah, I just shook the table. That's tough. Wars are expensive because you're paying troops military supplies, transportation, damages, rebuilding, like all these different things create these massive burdens of debt uh, for countries. And so they have to repay it or they need to knock down their debt. But you get it. You understand what I'm saying. England finds themselves, or Great Britain finds themselves in that specific position after the Seven Year War. For the most part, like they make out pretty well, like they win the war, whatever. But after that, they have incurred this massive amount of war debt and they have to find a way to pay it. Well, the folks in England, back across the pond in their little island, they're all like, uh, I'm not footing the bill for that. It didn't affect me. Hey, what if, what, just hear me out. What if we have all these colonists over here living in North America, right? What if we raise the taxes for them and made them pay for the war? That way it doesn't affect us. That's a win, right? Yeah. So that's exactly what England ends up doing. They jack the taxes up. And because of that, they needed to repay the war debt and like get the country back on course. Yeah, yeah. Well, the colonists, when that happens, they're ticked. And believe it or not, it's actually not about the taxes. A lot of people get like misconstrued or confused. Like, well, the Revolutionary War was fought because of taxes. Listen. Let's be honest with each other, Linda. In reality, there are two guaranteed things in life, death and taxes. You're going to pay taxes. Without taxes, you have no government. Without government, you have no order. Without order, you have no nation. Without nation, you have chaos and anarchy and death, right? So it kind of like circles around. Taxes are essential. However, inside the United States today, 
when there's taxes that are going to take place or raising taxes or increasing taxes, or whatever the case is, the people, citizens, folks, yeah, we vote on it or one of our representatives and senators, they vote on it. There's always a vote to see whether or not the majority wants taxes to increase. Okay, that way there's representation that takes place. But here's the problem back then. The colonists are sitting here going, okay, we have to pay more taxes. Why? Well, because you're calling us. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, you, you're calling us. You're going to pay the taxes. Do we get to say that? No, you, you don't get to say. You don't get to say um, you have no authority. You have no representation in the British government. You're just going to do what we tell you to do. So imagine living in a country where you have literally no rights. Too soon? Mm. That's exactly what happened to the colonists. The colonists are upset because there is taxation taking place and they're not being represented inside the government. They have no voice. It's this piece right here, that voice, that people get so upset about. And so they refer to this through history as taxation without representation. I'm saying you're going to be taxed to pay for these debts and you're not going to have a say in it. You're just going to do it. If you're in that position, are you really going to enjoy that? You're going to spend more of your money to pay for these folks 2,000 miles away on an island just because you exist here and you have no control over it. Would that make you upset? Of course it'd make you upset. It'd make anybody upset. Like, duh, if I don't have a say in something, I'm going to get irritated. How many of you have been in that classroom where the teacher's like, you will do this, you will behave, you will sit down, you will drink the hand <clears throat> you will use the hand sanitizer, and that's going to be it. There's no questions about this. There's no argumentation for it. My way or the highway, you have no power. Sound familiar? Right, we call it education. Similar concept, bigger scale for the colonies. So as this continues to take place and these taxes continue to take place, people get more irritated inside the colonies. So they begin to, wait for it, magic word, protest. <laughs> so they begin to protest these taxes. Some of the protests work and some of them fail. Eventually we get to this thing about, you know, Boston and tea and weird stuff like that. So here's your task. If you're gonna look at the research, there's a cool little video uh, I think this one has a video. I'm looking at my computer. <laughs> yeah, you get a video. Cool. So you're going to watch this video about the French and Indian War from Crash Course. Uh, the guy, like you think I'm eccentric, that dude, like he needs friends. Uh, then you've got three articles to take a look at. They're pretty short. What was the French and Indian War? The impact of the French and Indian War? That was super important. And also slavery and f <clears throat> slavery and French and Indian War. Okay. So one thing that historians have really struggled with that I, this is an opinion, huh, that they've done a poor job of is when we look at the outcome of the Seven Year War, we always focus on how does it affect the colonists? How does it affect the British? How does it affect the French? All, I mean, all important because they're all key players, but we're forgetting a few other people groups. We don't focus on what happens with the Native Americans that currently live in North America whose land is being taken by these European settlers. So that's the first thing. The other thing is, Guys, slavery exists in North America inside these colonies. Britain is making bank on slavery. That means people who were slaves in North America are directly affected by this war as well. So you're going to explore inside your task. <clears throat> it's easy, I think. <laughs> and it says, after analyzing the refresher course of the French and Indian War, all that information you need to answer the following questions. All right, pretty straightforward. What was the impact of the French and Indian War on the following people groups? All right, so there's five specific people groups we're looking at. What was the impact on Native Americans? What was the impact on slaves? What was the impact on the colonists, the French, and the British? All right, five people, five people groups. They're all in the reading. They're all accessible, all right? Once again, to emphasize, Please be sure to provide textual evidence to support your answers in order to receive credit. All right. Fill that out. Get it taken care of. Support, support, support. I want all the evidence all the time. Submit that. You'll be good to go. All right. Any questions? If you're raising your hand, I still can't see you. <laughs> uh, if you do have questions, let me know. Contact me. Shoot me an email. Whatever the case may be. You know my office hours. I hope by now. I need to get that posted somewhere. Et cetera, et cetera. All right. Give it a shot. Do your best. Take your time. We're not in a rush. All right. Good luck.